President Obama smoked pot when he was young, he said, a fact he, he's never tried to hide. Here's another fact. Each day, an estimated 6,000 Americans will try marijuana for the first time. It's the most common illicit drug in the United States, with nearly 15 million people using it at least once a month. But should marijuana be legalized? Let us know what you think. All this week, we're taking a close look at that deeply divisive issue in a series of eye-opening reports that may change your mind one way or the other. It's a special 360 investigation we're calling America's High, the case for and against pot. And we begin with a growing fight over medical marijuana. Now, as of right now, 13 states have laws that permit marijuana, also known as cannabis, to be taken for medical conditions. There's no prescription for cannabis. Instead, doctors issue a recommendation in these states. But is it safe? Is it effective? Does it actually work? Melissa Etheridge says it worked for her. The Grammy award-winning singer-songwriter turned to marijuana after she was diagnosed with breast cancer. In an interview, Etheridge tells me why she did it and how she believes it helped restore her health. I'm actually grateful for my cancer diagnosis. Grateful because it, it, it changed your life? Changed my life. Woke me up, totally. Melissa Etheridge's wake-up call came in October 2004 when she was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer. She immediately underwent two surgeries to remove the tumor and lymph nodes and then began what she calls the most painful experience of all, chemotherapy. What is the pain like? It was just a general pain of your body dying, of all your cells dying. And so your appetite's gone and you're nauseous. And it, it, your hair has fallen out, your skin, it, it, it's like death. And, and the only thing I could do is lay there. I can't, it hurt to, light hurt, sound hurt. I couldn't read anything, I just laid there. <laughs> Needing something to ease the pain, she didn't want to use Vicodin or other prescription pills that could be addictive or come with side effects. All of these things have side effects. So the steroids and the, the pain relief that they give you on that first day when you go into chemotherapy causes constipation, so they, well, here's a pill for the constipation, which will give you diarrhea, <laughs> and, you know, but you, and, and you get huge side effects from all of this. Etheridge decided to combat the pain of chemotherapy with medicinal marijuana. The first time he did it, it made a big difference. It instantly, I mean, instantly, within, you know, a minute, relieves the nausea, relieves the pain. And, and all of a sudden, I, I was normal. You don't, you don't take medicinal marijuana to get high. So do, you, do, you weren't No, you don't get high. a high. No, it's not a high. It's a normal. And I could all of a sudden, I could get out of bed. I could go see my kids. I, and it was amazing. Often too sick from the chemotherapy to smoke, Etheridge's wife, Tammy Lynn Michaels, would mix the marijuana into butter and spread it on Melissa's food. Or she'd inhale it through a vaporizer. Medicinal marijuana works so well, Etheridge says she used it every four hours daily during chemotherapy. Did you ever worry about becoming addicted? Do you, you know, there are those who say, well, look, this is a gateway drug. No, it's not, not at all. If you ever were on that side of it, you would understand what I mean. It's, it's almost laughable to think that, that, that you could be addicted to this. It's not at all. You, you mentioned you still have a prescription. Do you mm -hmm. still use marijuana? Yeah, I do. The, the effects of... Um, uh, on my gastrointestinal system leaves me with I, I, I have a real low tolerance for acid of any kind and so acid reflux is a constant problem and um, I, I don't want to take the the little pills that they give you that have all the side effects to to help with that um, and I and I do use it I'm one of the, the users like, that would like in a stressful situation or maybe when I've eaten that cheese pizza with my kids you know mm -hmm. Um, that I'll do that and it settles, it totally completely settles all that. So, Most yeah. people eat the cheese pizza after. That's marijuana. true. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you got not, it backwards. it's not like that. I, know. I run for hope. I run to feel. I run for the truth for all that is real. Today at 48, Melissa Etheridge has been cancer free for five years. And she says she can't imagine having gone through the battle of her life without medicinal marijuana. She's now pushing for its legalization. There's more than, I think, 200,000 people in California who are registered to receive medicinal marijuana. Do you really believe that all those people, though, have legitimate reasons to be getting yes. marijuana? Who are we to say what a legitimate reason is? If it helps somebody at the end of the day, instead of drinking a couple glasses of wine, 
to have a few tokes? What were we to say? What's why? Why must we in this country be so judgmental about this? These people aren't hurting anybody. They're not hurting themselves. Well, Seth Rich and I covered a lot of ground. You can see more of the conversation, more of the interview at ac360.com. So that's where you can also join the live chat, which is happening now. Let us know what you think about this issue. Again, ac360.com is the site. Up next, a much different view of medical marijuana. A teacher says she bought as much pot as, pot as she wanted, and she thought it would ease her pain for bipolar disorder. Instead, she says it nearly drove her to suicide. Plus, a medical marijuana dispensary will take you inside one where the choices seem endless. So these names of different cannabis, these are all given by the people who are growing it. Exactly. Their particular blend. Exactly. So there's like Bubba Joe, Mendo Purple, Princess, Third mm -hmm. Eye, mm -hmm. Air Force One. Air Force One, how about that? Well, before the break, you heard from singer Melissa Etheridge, in her own words, explain why she used marijuana to battle the pain after she learned she had breast cancer. Etheridge is a strong supporter of medical marijuana, but another woman who used marijuana to treat her illness is not. She said it nearly drove her to suicide. Now, her story raises a lot of questions, not only about the effectiveness of the drug, but about the wide discretion doctors have in giving it or in recommending it. Randy Kate reports. When this California school teacher was diagnosed with bipolar disorder nine years ago, she decided to medicate with marijuana. She asked us not to identify her, so we'll call her Lisa. Lisa found a doctor online to recommend medical marijuana. She showed me how easy it was. Yep, you just type in finding medical marijuana doctor and um, a list of websites will pop up. Before she started using medical marijuana, Lisa says depression would keep her in bed for weeks. She also had thoughts of suicide. Medical marijuana was supposed to make life better for her. But remember, once she got the paperwork, Lisa could buy as much marijuana as she wanted at the California dispensaries. And it was all legal. Here's a free gram for coming. And you can try this blend or this blend. In fact, we have plants over here if you'd like to buy some clones to grow your own. Um, we're going to throw in some edibles for you. We're going to give you some cookies, maybe some brownies, you know, just for being such a good customer. Lisa had smoked marijuana before for fun. She says she never imagined she could get addicted. But this was so easy to buy. And the better it made her feel, the more she wanted to smoke. Lisa became hooked spending as much as one thousand dollars a month on the drug what does that translate into it's about um seven eight joints a day <laughs> eight joints a day you were yeah. smoking bong rips i would wake up in the morning have a nice bong rip and then i would on the way to work i would smoke i would leave during my break and smoke i would smoke on the way home i would smoke all night long psychiatrist denise green didn't treat lisa in fact, she says Lisa never should have been approved for medical marijuana. Long-term side effects of chronic marijuana use psychologically are depression and anxiety. So anyone who certainly has underlying psychiatric illnesses should not be using marijuana on top of that. Adding to the problem, Dr. Green says, medical marijuana isn't dispensed or controlled the way other medications are. There are no limits and no fine print for how to take the drug. It's not a standard prescription. It's not like, you know, smoke one joint every eight hours for pain and the, the prescription says you can get 12 joints. Lisa hit rock bottom two years ago. The marijuana had started to affect her negatively. Her mood swings became more extreme. In June 2007, she found herself on the verge of suicide. Her parents called police, had her rushed to the hospital, that was the last time Lisa ever touched the stuff. It saved my life for a long time. And then it stopped saving my life. And it started killing my life. Today, Lisa has been clean two years. She goes to meetings at Marijuana Anonymous and takes lithium daily. A much more controlled way to manage her mood, she says, instead of smoking marijuana whenever she felt like getting high. Randy joins us. Now, it's interesting, though, Lisa does think 
medical marijuana should be legal, even though she says she had a bad experience with it. Right. I mean, she was somebody who was very prone to addiction because of her bipolar disorder. So she and she had considered suicide, you said, before even trying it. Right. Even before that, she had tried marijuana in college and, and had used it for fun. But she doesn't believe that it should be legalized for somebody like her who has this addictive personality, but for somebody like Melissa Etheridge who had cancer or somebody else who has another physical ailment mm -hmm. um, and is looking to uh, help them get rid of, of pain or things like that, then she thinks it should be legal. But you know, she she really enjoyed the high, unlike what Melissa. Right. Etheridge it seems like she do. was kind of chasing a high. I mean, she woke up with do bong hits. Uh, right. It seems like she enjoyed being high for a long time, and then suddenly it no longer was what she wanted. Right. I mean, she didn't hide that at all. She told us she loved the high. She chased the high, yeah. but it also made her feel better. And then something happened along the way, and her mood swings got very extreme. And she got very dark. She was angry all the all the time. She nearly lost her job, mm -hmm. and then she was hospitalized when she became so close came so close to committing suicide. Well, two different views. Our viewers can make up their own mind. Let us know what you think of the uh, our blog, ac360.com. A lot of people talking on the blog about it right now.